Hey crafters, I'm so excited about today's project because I'm tackling a couple of projects that I've been wanting to do for some time. And of course, summer is such a great time for crafting. The weather is fun. You're seeing great people. Maybe you're getting ready to do a little traveling. The sun is shining. It's just so inspiring. It's a great time to get your crafty on and to get making some stuff, maybe even do some things you've been wanting to do for a while. Kind of like today's project is for me. I am going to be making or tie-dyeing, upcycling, refashioning two bags that I think are going to be perfect for summer. One is a plain can cotton canvas tote bag that I purchased online. I actually love this tote bag style. I've purchased quite a few before and I think today we're going to be transforming that plain kind of beige bag into a rainbow tote bag. I think that could be so much fun to have like this rainbow bag that could be, you know, like you could use it as a shoulder bag or a beach bag or a farmer's market bag. Very packable as well. I think that would be an amazing item for some. Next, I have been collecting patches for some time. I love patches. I get them whenever I find cute ones, either secondhand or at the craft store or Etsy is a great place. The only problem is I've been waiting for the perfect item to cover in patches. And I think I finally found the perfect thing. I recently thrifted a cotton canvas backpack and this backpack is bright red, but it's otherwise kind of plain. So I think it's the perfect item to embellish with my patch collection. Shoulder tote bag, rainbowized, backpack covered in patches. I think both of these could be really fun to use this summer. So come along with me on the crafting adventure. See what you think. Do these inspire you to try making some of your own summer rig bags? Upcycle a few things of your own. See what you think. I'll show you the supplies we're working with. I'll talk you through the steps I'm using and see what you think. Here we go. Okay guys, next up we are working on this excellent cotton tote bag. It is a great bag, but it is kind of plain. I think it's time for a little brightening up, don't you think? Well, I got this bag on Amazon. I will try to link to this one because I really love the thick straps. It is actually pretty roomy inside. Let's take a peek. It has these little like sleeves on the side of the bag. I think those are for like wine bottles if you're going to be using this for groceries, but um, it does fit a lot of stuff when it's all all unfolded. And I especially love that it's cotton because you know what that means. We can dye it. <laughs> so I'm keeping things easy peasy lemon squeezy today and we are using a tie-dye squeezy bottle kit. We're doing these colors. I'm afraid I've already opened the package. I've already started setting up for this, so I'll show you the, the dye bottles in a second, but this is a tulip kit. One of my favorite combinations, and you can tell this is super easy. We add water to the bottles with powdered dye in them, squirt the dye onto the item, wrap it up, and let it sit six to eight hours before washing it out, and that's what's in the kit. Kind of color spectrum-y colors, kind of, but really bright. I think I actually want to do kind of color spectrum on this thing. Like, maybe I'd start with, like, maybe purple, blue, green, yellow to red at the top. Or the opposite. I'm not totally sure what. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to tie this bag up a lot before I squirt dye on it. I don't really want that much of a pattern and I feel like just using the squeezy bottles which splash and squirt a lot I think that will give me enough of a pattern on the bag. I think I really just want those bands of color and I want them to be 
pretty bright, so not too much of the tan showing through if I can. So as usual, I'll be taking you guys outside to my carport for this kind of tie-dye. I have my tarp set up. I've opened the tie-dye kit. So I've got the gloves and the rubber bands and the bottles of dye. I'll get this wet, I think, so to help the dye bleed a little bit more. And we're going to switch over to time lapse and you can see what this looks like.
Oh my gosh, you guys. I love this bag. Ah! <laughs> you know, I've been envisioning this project for a little while. And this is, this is, this is it, man. This is so fun. Oh my gosh. I love the color gradation. This is super fun. You might notice that the colors definitely did fade from what they looked like when the dye was first applied. I've noticed that with the uh, tie-dye kits, they oftentimes fade after the item is washed. Um, some colors are darker than others in this kit. The navy is pretty navy still, but the green looked really, really dark, and it's now more of a mint color. The yellow is pretty light too. My fave though is this like red magenta pink thing going on. <laughs> I love this. I tried to get color all over the bag, of course across the bottom as well, on up into the handles. I definitely could have added a little more to the handles. They got a little light on one side, but note to self. I also ended up accidentally getting some like splash marks because the squeezy bottles just, they just splash, okay? So I decided to add more and I took the purple dye and I just sprinkled splashes all over to kind of work it in a little bit and I actually love it <laughs> that's so cool it kind of reminds me of like I don't know like a butterfly wing with kind of the rainbow colors and little circle bits I don't know anyway you guys I think this bag is going to be super fun to use and I'm really excited to try it out Well, I was really excited to find this red canvas backpack at Goodwill. My goodness, it was in really great shape. And it is a kind of a canvas, heavy duty canvas material. Um, this is the closure at the top. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Ah, there it is. Of course, it has a cinch closure. closure. I really love the pockets in the front. My first thought was that since it is canvas and cotton, hey, maybe I could tie dye it. It's really hard to find bags that are natural material that would take dye. So that was my first thought. But then I washed it and it's in really good shape. I was able to get out some dirt stains and things. So I don't feel like I really need to dye it, honestly. And it is such a bright color that I would have to dye it a really dark color to get a p pattern to show up so i was thinking why don't i raid my patch stash and maybe sew some patches on here i have been collecting quite a few patches especially with like a fruit and flower theme i think this could be it i especially want to put some on the front pockets i think that could be really cute maybe some going up to the side and of course, some um, on the top. Probably don't need to put any on the back. Maybe like a cute one at the top or something. Because this will go against my back and I don't want to have a lot of friction maybe ripping any patches on the back there. But, um, oh man, you guys, I think this could be really fun. I'm going to look through my patches and see what I find. 
Well, before officially starting this project, I did a little bit of research and I did a little bit of shopping for some tools that I'm hoping will help make this patch sewing on process a little easier, more efficient, and hopefully more fun. Um, this canvas is a pretty thick material. I know I've used patches in the past where I was trying to sew them onto denim and things like that. Patches themselves can be kind of stiff and hard to get a needle through. And then when you're dealing with a thick fabric that you're sewing the patch to, ay ay ay, it can be really hard to get the needle through both sets of material. It can be hard to pull it out again. So it can just be really frustrating and hard on your fingers. So uh, thankfully I did a little research and I was also watching some excellent videos by Abby Cox and some others. I really appreciated Abby Cox's video on thimbles and some tips for hand sewing and uh, those of course by Bernadette Banner as well on hand sewing. I've got a lot to learn <laughs> and I really appreciate the, the teachers out there that are putting the information out there for us all to help us all get better in this learning process. Um, apparently there is a world of tools out there that I haven't used, don't know how to use, didn't really know that much about. And I have a lot to learn, so I'm diving in. <laughs> to start with, I did purchase some new needles because the ones I have are really old and kind of inherited from various sources. I'm not sure which needles are going to be the best for this project. These guys are thicker. These guys are thinner. I, I just bought a couple to try because I don't know what I'm doing. But yeah, that's what I bought. We'll see. Hopefully that will help. This was a recommended brand, so... That's awesome. Whatever happens, this is going to be an improvement because I have had old needles from sewing kits that I've had for years and years and probably inherited from someone else. So things can only get better. <laughs> and then, hey, I have never really used a, a thimble, but you definitely need a tool to help push the thread through really thick fabric. And so I'm experimenting. I don't actually know my thimble size. Um, this one is a leather thimble, which I was hoping might be good for my impatientness because I'm hoping it might be a little bit flexible, might stay on my finger better. It looks like it's going to fit my finger. <laughs> I don't know. Fingers crossed. It just seemed like a cool idea. I know Bernadette Banner tends to use um, some leather thimbles at some points in time, and that just seemed to me an idea that I might be willing to try and, and put some patience into because it might be a little more comfortable than a metal one. Not sure. I'm still open to the idea of getting a metal thimble. I have a couple that don't fit at all. So I would have to do a little research, maybe just buy multiple sizes and keep the one that fits. So the thimble process is definitely going to be a process for me, but I'm kind of starting with this guy. And then I was doing a little research and this, these guys look kind of cool. Um, from what I can tell in the, the description of the product, these aren't really designed for pushing a needle through. They're more designed for pulling it through the fabric once you've gotten the needle through and you need to you know, pull it out because, you know, see the little, little grippy picture? Sometimes pulling the needle can be really difficult when it's coming through a patch and really thick fabric. Um, you can also get like little circles of like kind of a foam rubber that are like needle grips and you kind of pinch the needle with that and pull it through the fabric. I've used those before. Um, definitely recommend. I was hoping this might be a little bit easier because they stay on your finger and hopefully you can just sew more efficiently because you're not picking up a needle pull. You're wearing it. Um, yeah, that's my theory. I'm really hoping these guys are going to fit. So let's, let's do a little opening here. Oop. Okay, so I think it goes on this finger. Hey, okay, that's that's cool. That actually feels pretty good. Wait, which way do I use it? I think I do it that way. <laughs> Can you tell I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> hey, okay, I kind of have small hands and I got the size small. And that feels pretty good. Definitely going to stay on. It might be a little bit tight, but I'm thinking it's going to stretch a little bit. Huh. Okay, that's cool. Let's check out these guys. I'm really hoping these will work. And if not, I'll have to get a needle grip. Um, okay, so what are they recommending? Okay, so one goes on 
Wait a minute. No. One goes on here. Oh boy. That's a little tight. <laughs> One goes on here. They do stretch a little bit though. Okay, that's cool. Huh. Okay, that feels a little tight. Maybe I should have gotten the next size up. What size did I get with these guys? Hmm. I thought I got the size small with these. These may be a little tight in the long run, but it's a start. Finger protection. Needle pulling enabled. Ha! Okay, so getting some good tools. This seems like this could be a good start to this project. Let me pull out my patch collection and let's try playing around with those to see where we want to put them. Well, you guys, you can see why I need to do a project with patches because I have been collecting some of these for a long time and it's time. Oh man, I'm loving these colors. I'm loving the, just the happy vibe from just looking at these patches all together with this bright red backpack. Ah, it's making me happy. Okay, I don't think I can use all of these guys. I mean, I have some little puffy heart. I have floral appliques. Some of these are vintage that I've collected. I have some patches that I got. At least these guys from Joann's. This one my sister got me on Etsy. Even some little lace pieces. Not entirely sure what you call those, but they're cute. And yeah, the little ribbon embroidery little guys. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use all of these because that would take forever. But I think I'm going to focus mainly on like the big patches first and then hopefully fill in with some of these little flowers, maybe a little bit of the lace. We'll see. I, yeah, don't think I can use them all because that will take a very very long time and might be actually too much but um I think what I'm going to do is unpack most of these get them out of the packages get out some pins and just play around with placement and see where I want these to go this is going to take a little while so we'll switch over to time lapse and but then I'll show you what it looks like when I kind of reach the the point where I like the arrangement Hi you guys, it is a couple days later and yes, I have tackled some of the sewing and oh my word, this has taken a long time. Oh my word, I've done some of the bigger ones here on the bottom and the smaller ones as well and I'm starting to move up towards the top. 
of the backpack. Don't worry, I'll talk you through the process here in just a second and show you how I'm sewing them on. But man, this is really time consuming. Um, this fabric is really thick. Um, it's hard to sew through some of the patches. Some of the patches are really difficult. I've been using all of the tools I have plus more to try to get this to work. So this is kind of one of those long haul projects. It You can't really rush it. It's going to be difficult. You got to take your time. That said, this is actually a pretty good project to do if you're kind of stuck sitting around for a little while. Like I've had, um, at the time I'm filming this, I've had a really bad cold for several days. And so I've been kind of stuck on the couch watching a lot of shows. And this has actually been kind of the perfect project because I can sit on my sofa and I don't need like a sewing machine. I don't need lots of supplies. I can tackle a couple patches you know, maybe at a time, and then take a break. This is also a good project to do if you're on a trip and, you know, you want something you can work away at a little bit at a time, but you don't need a lot of supplies and it won't make a big mess. So, you know, long project, and it's kind of a difficult project. Takes some work, but I've been enjoying doing it. It seems like the right project for the moment for me, and I'm actually really loving the results. This is kind of giving me, like... 80s 90s kid vibes which I mean well you can't argue with that okay let's look at how I've been sewing these guys on this little guy is a great example because you can really see with the red thread that I've been doing little stitches all the way around to try to sew these down this guy's a little harder to see because I've been using the white thread I've been trying to catch the edge of the patch and just do little stitches all the way around. And then, of course, with these appliques, I'm trying to catch as many little bits of it as I can. Some of these patches had a really wide white margin going around. Um, and that white is kind of the, like, interfacing material that the patch is sewn on. I didn't want to just stitch into that because I feel like that's not very stable. I wanted to stitch into the sewing, into the patch a little bit all the way around. And that's basically what I've done with most of these guys. If I had the ability to kind of match my thread to the patch that, let's focus a little better here. There we go. If I could match my thread to the patch, it kind of blended in more. Like you can't even really see it on these guys. But um, <laughs> it was a little tricky. I tried putting pieces of like cardboard inside the pockets to give me something to sew off of and oh yeah by the way did I totally forget that the pockets were actually double pockets and stitch this one through both layers and make it so I can't put everything in this pocket uh yeah I totally did that but yeah I tried putting like some cardboard in there I also tried using like a small plastic chopping board to like have something for my needle to sew off of is yeah Anyway, but it's been a process, but a good process overall. So let me get some of my supplies. We're going to work on this patch right here, and I'll show you how I've been sewing these on. Okay, guys, let's tackle this really cute apple here in the corner. I've got to say that the tools that I bought have come in pretty handy. I really love these finger grips for helping pull the needle through. These have been so helpful because I don't have to pick up a needle grip circle and pull on it. I'm wearing them. So that's been awesome. But you might notice I'm not wearing my leather thimble. I'm wearing one of the metal ones that I have. This one's actually a little too small for me, but I'm using it anyway. I do love the leather one, but man, I've been having to just push this needle through really, really tough fabric and patches so the, the metal one seems to be the job the one for the job I'll save the leather one for lighter weight projects because I really like how comfortable that one feels but um I've got my needle I'm actually using one of the smaller embroidery needles seems to be a good thickness not too thick that it can't get through the fabric but it's also kind of sturdy of course I've got my thread doubled and knotted and uh, let's, let's do a little tackling here. I'm going to start down here kind of near the bottom of the apple. I'll try to get my hand in here so I don't sew through the double layers. Okay, I'm going to be taking like a little tiny stitch. 
and I just want to lock my thread in here. Now, instead of, let's see, trying to make sure you guys can kind of see that. Sorry, it's hard to see with the red thread on the red backpack. Now, instead of just pulling my knot here to the fabric, I'm actually going to put my needle through the loop and kind of catch it. Kind of hard to see. But yeah, I just want to catch that knot so it can't get pulled through. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so now my knot's going to be hidden. I think I'm going to sew into this border around the patch just a little bit and then do my little stitches all the way around like I did for the watermelon down here. Make them as even as I can, but honestly this fabric's also really hard to sew through so it may not be perfect and that's okay. Okay, where's our where's our thread? We're down here. Okay, so I'm going to do a little stitch into there. And I think I'm going to try to get my needle to come up somewhere over here a little bit. Ugh. Sorry, holding a backpack <laughs> and not knocking my tripod over is pulling throwing me off a little bit. Okay, I think we're almost there. <sighs> okay. There we go. Yay, thimble power. Okay. Okay, so really hard to see, but I got a little stitch going right there. The cool thing about using a matching thread, a thread that matches the edge of your patch, is that you're probably not going to really see too much of it, which is awesome. I got to say, this was way harder to do on the patches that were on the smaller pockets because it was a little harder to get your hand inside. Um, I know my sister and I have done patches on denim before and that can be a hard thing because you're trying to make sure you're not stitching through the pant leg. <laughs> you gotta get your hand or a piece of cardboard or something underneath to prevent you from sewing the thing closed. Okay, so we're starting to get some little stitches I can't even really see them. I'm assuming you probably can't. Sorry, my my blurriness here on the camera here. But, uh, hey, you can't see them? That's great. That means I can make them messy and you're not going to be able to tell. Ha, 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 ha. All right, I'm going to switch over to time lapse. And then, oop, didn't want that bit. Switch over to time lapse and then we'll show you what she looks like when we're done. Okay guys, I've sewn all the way around. We're actually looking at the inside of the backpack. Just kind of talking you through how I finish off the threads. So we've got our stitching all the way around. I'm just going to take a little stitch. This is going to not show in the front. <sighs> Taking a little stitch and now I've got this lovely, you know, loop of thread. I'm going to kind of use that. To catch my thread so let's see got a good little tail there for tying it off putting my needle in my pin cushion okay so instead of just tying a knot I'm actually going to kind of pull this loop down a little bit okay so there's my loop this is just the way I finish this off I know other people do other things but I'm gonna put my one of my threads through the loop and then try to pull that down there you go. That's hopefully going to catch my now knot that I'm making. 
I don't want this not to pull through and then let the patch start coming unstitched. Maybe I'll just do a double, a, a double knot. We'll see. That should just help catch it on the back. Okay, cool. Okay, let's take a look at how this patch looks from the front. Okay, here's our apple patch. It's all sewn on. You can kind of see the little stitches there on the green. And the same thing all the way around. You can't even really see them because they blend in with the red. You can see them a little bit on the green. I definitely tried to catch edges, like the edges of the leaves. Try to make sure those are really sewn down the edges of the stem because I feel like those are the ones that are going to pop up easier. And you might be wondering, why didn't I just iron these patches down? Well, some of them are iron-on, like these newer ones. Others are not. The appliques are not. Some of these vintage ones are not iron on. And I don't really love ironing them down. I feel like I really lose control as soon as I get out my iron. I feel like the patch can shift around while I'm trying to iron it onto the item. So uh, I just don't love that. And then at the end of the day, I would still have to stitch them down. This fabric is so stiff and it's going to be moving a lot because I'm going to have a lot of stuff in this backpack. It's going to be full. It's going to be creasing and moving. I may need to wash it. I know those patches, if I iron them down, are going to start peeling up eventually. So even if I did iron them, I would still have to stitch them. And I feel like sometimes once you add the heat and iron the iron-on patches down and get that kind of glue from the back stuck into the fabric, that it makes it even harder to sew through. <laughs> I've got to say, some of these iron-on patches were really hard to sew through, even if they weren't melded to the fabric. Like this guy was really tough to get through. So that's just me. I just sew them down instead of ironing. One idea would be you could kind of iron them down first and then stitch. That, and then you wouldn't be dealing with pins. I feel like that's harder to sew through. I don't know. This is just what I do. I'm sewing them. So see what you think when you're tackling a project like this. I'm going to spend some more time doing a little more sewing. Oh, this guy's going to take some time. Oh, man. But that's okay. It's one of those projects. Labor of love. Labor of love. And I'll show you what this looks like when we're done. <laughs> 